Shots fired, shots fired! Let's go westbound, eastbound! Get her up! Get her up! Get her up! Hey, stand up, are you hurt? Get her up, get her up! Here, I got one hand, you get the other. Let's go. Hi everyone, Donut here. Today I'm going to be breaking down a shooting with so much action, I had to double check and make sure it wasn't directed by Michael Bay. This one has bullets flying, hostages escaping, and a mother defending her home. Before we get into the shooting, I wanted to ask you a question real quick. Are you in debt? Because our sponsor for this video may be able to help you. That's right, our sponsor is PDS Debt. The United States might be going to war soon with one of those countries that has a lot of oil. I mean, a country that needs democracy. That means gas prices are rising and you're just gonna go further into debt. PDS Debt has customized options for anyone struggling with credit card debt, personal loans, collections, or even medical bills. They can consolidate all your debts into one low monthly payment. Payment. Anyone with $10,000 or more eligible debt qualifies, and there is no minimum credit score required. PDS Debt is a top rated company on Google, and they have an A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Right now, you can go to pdsdebt.com slash donut and save thousands in interest and fees. They'll help you pay off all your debt in a fraction of the time. So go to pdsdebt.com slash donut and get your free debt assessment today. It takes 30 seconds and it could really help you get out of that debt hole. Get out of that hole. That's pdsdebt.com slash Donut. Now let's do shooting. Today's video takes us to the little spoon of Reno. Get him up! Get him up! Get him up! Sparks, Nevada. We're going to be starting out at the 1500 block of Green Bray Drive in Sparks, Nevada, where prostitution is legal in eight counties. Something like that. There's a bunch of hoes in different area codes. Oh, yeah. Back to Sparks, Nevada. March 29th, 2024, 1.40 p.m. A Sparks police officer pulls over a Ford Expedition for not having a license plate. Cars without license plates are either stolen, leaving the scene of a crime, or on their way to create their own scene of a crime. Or someone just stole their license plate. It happens all the time. Either way, you can't be driving around without a license plate as per the law. It's bullshit, I agree, but some state trooper with his big stupid hat is probably gonna pull you over. The man driving the vehicle is this guy. Before the officer can even communicate with this non-contributing earthworm person, we see this. Shots fired! Shots fired! Let's go westbound, eastbound. And here's the footage from the dash cam. As you saw there, the officer was wounded in the initial encounter. The officer was struck three times in the chest with his vest, luckily stopping one of the bullets, but he was grazed by bullets in the neck and head. Do you know how f***ing lucky you have to be for two bullets to graze your neck and head and not kill you, and especially one to not penetrate your vest? That dude's aim was off by this much. Missed it by that much. When you watch a video like this, you can see how quickly this sh can go from zero to 60, how it can go from, hey, this is just a normal little no plate thing, and then you get shot the chest and the head and the neck. This is why you see police officers being extra precautious when they are on traffic stops. You never know what you're gonna get into. You never know what you're gonna get. Hey, no play. Oh, f I'm shot. That's how it goes sometimes. So if that cop is being an ass on a traffic stop, sometimes in the back of his mind, he's thinking, what if I get shot? Unless they're a state trooper. They're just always ass it's Joking. Ass I'm gonna get f***ing pulled over so much in San Antonio now. Your hats are stupid. All right, let's keep going. Continuing on, the officer is struck. He returns fire only to see the suspect get T-boned by a f***ing U-Haul truck. God said, not today. The karma U-Haul be doing work. Shots fired, shots fired. Let's go westbound, eastbound. Westbound, eastbound. After the officer returns fire, he radios in what happened. Even after he was shot three times, he keeps chasing down the suspect. What a stud. I'm shot. It's just 1050. <clears throat> And this 
this next part is what you just love to see. Oh, the gun. Where'd he go? This way, turn around. Behind you. Where'd he go? Looks like he jumped the fence half. BMA, jean jacket. I think I need medics for my personnel. Sparks, Nevada looks like it has some really cool people there. Half the neighborhood comes out to assist the officer. This is almost like that one video I did where there was a barricaded suspect and the entire neighborhood came out with guns to shoot at the suspect and help the officer. I'm hit! Seven for walking. Good job, random citizens. I got your back. Not long after this, police started setting up a perimeter around the neighborhood. Dispatch then received this 911 call. 911, what's the address for mercy? There's a guy in your house with a gun? What you didn't hear from this call is another reason why you shouldn't f*** around with the citizens of Sparks, Nevada. After the crash we watched earlier with the U-Haul of Justice, the suspect fled on foot and forced himself into a nearby home. Dude, he is racking up the felonies. What do we got? Attempted murder of a police officer, and now we have a home invasion. Inside of the home was a mother cooking for her teenage son. Because she was cooking, she had a knife in her hand. Someone barges into this mother's home. Her son is there in the home. She has a knife in her hand. So what does she do? She stabs the f***ing guy. After getting a little poke, he said, no, I don't think I should stick around here. In the 911 call, you can hear the suspect ask the mother, did you shoot me? No, you re <laughs> She stabbed you. Ugh. Oh, I've been shot. <laughs> this lady went full ass mama bear on this waste of oxygen. Here we have a little bit of footage of the aftermath. They have people that down on my head. He was on the back and came inside. Where is he? Right there. So he I, mean, to, I think he went to the other house. After he fled that residence, the local sheriff's office and the Reno Police Department joined in on the search. They started going door to door looking for him. Okay, back to work. During this time, the suspect had entered another residence and took a woman hostage. He forced her into her car and then attempted to leave the area. As police were searching the neighborhood, they made contact with the woman. She was in her driveway just moments before leaving. Smart police! Police department! Hey, just cover me just in case the guy might be in there. Police department, show me your hands! Show me your hands! Smart police! Put your hands up! Stop! That doesn't look like anyone's in there. All right, so we have a critical incident that's going on. It's kind of dangerous right now. Did anyone jump inside your yard or backyard? No. Where are you headed to? Uh, okay. Um, what I need you to do, can you go inside your house and shelter in place? Okay. Let's get this family out of here. And we need them for detectives so they get more information. That had to be the most butt-puckering moment in that woman's life. Obviously, the officers didn't see the suspect in the back, but they felt a little weird about it. You know, just one of those gut feelings. They searched her house and decided to check on her again, to make sure the suspect wasn't inside of her house. When they got to the house to knock on the door, they saw her crawling around on the ground. Hmm. Yeah. Well, please. Hey, there's, a, there's an older W fan in this house. She's the one I talked to. Did they come back inside? Yeah. Hello, please. Ah! Ah! Get her up! Get her up! Get her up! 
Stand up. Are you hurt? Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. I got her. I got her. I got her. I got her. There. I got one hand. You get that. Let's go. Here's another body camera angle from an officer who sprays the side of her house to suppress the suspect's fire. During this exchange of bullets between the suspect and the officers, they were able to drag the hostage away to safety, but not without more of the officers being hit. Again, an officer was saved by his vest when it stopped a bullet. One of the officers even had his ear pro shot off. We've come to know it as the magic bullet theory. But wait, there's more. With the suspect fleeing from the house, running through the backyard, jumping a fence, falling somehow, and breaking into another house. That homeowner was able to hide in their bathroom and call 911. It's really surprising me that not a lot of these people have guns handy in their house. They just looked in my house and barricaded my bedroom. The police had got the police off. Please, God, wait down the front door and come in. Okay. He's barricaded in the bathroom? No, I'm in the bathroom. He's on okay. the right. Does he know you're in there? I don't know, maybe. What's your name? I'm scared of that. It's not clear if the suspect heard the woman calling 911, but he got spooked somehow. But this dumb motherfucker has had bad luck with houses lately, so he decided to instead creep around her backyard and think about his options, which honestly isn't a bad call on his part. As you can see, the firing squad and SWAT team lined up across from the house, which he notices, prompting him to hide in a shed in the backyard. While our suspect is spending a little bit of his time hiding in that kill box, the woman who is hiding in her bathroom decides this is a great time to make a run for the police officers. The suspect must have heard her leave her house, and so he goes back into the house. Now we have a barricaded suspect inside of that house. For the next five hours, crisis negotiators tried to reason with the man, get him out of the house. But believe it or not, the guy who has been trying to murder police officers and civilians all day, missing his shots by mere centimeters and hitting others with bullets, doesn't respond. I feel like this is one of those things where you should treat it like warfare, where you just toss in a couple of frags and then bulldoze the place over. Problem solved, problem stays solved. Ranger. Rangers lead the way, Honey Badger FTW. So SWAT does what SWAT does and they go in and get him. You got blood on the fridge, As they see the suspect curled up in some filth, his natural habitat, he opens fire once again, striking one of the officer's flashlights. So far, he's killed two vests, some ear pro, and a flashlight. This man really has it out for police gear. I really don't know where these agencies keep getting their level 3A flashlights. Remember, I did a video not too long ago where an officer got shot in a flashlight and it stopped. Seriously though, keep it up. Those are quality flashlights. As you can see, the officers backed out of the garage and they tried to negotiate with the suspect for another two and a half hours. Like I said, pop some frags and just roll over that house. I could solve this problem with a little bit of gasoline and a lighter. Ooh, no, cops can't do that. So right there, the suspect did not feel the need to respond, most likely because he can't feel anything at all. See that last exchange with officer SWAT dumped some rounds on the way out. Just a little suppressing fire to get out. Some of those shots landed when officers re-entered the garage. He somehow died from all the bullets striking him. You killed him? No, I shot him. Bullets in the fall killed him. 
and police officers found a 40 caliber Glock next to his body. And nothing of value was lost. All of the officers who were wounded were treated at a local hospital and released with minor injuries. Well, we have a dead suspect who obviously decided he wanted to die. He took multiple hostages, barricaded himself inside three homes, and ambushed several officers. He was going to go to jail for a long f***ing time. Even with all that, striking several officers with bullets, they gave him every opportunity to give up. But he decided to try and kill them instead. And uh, look where that got you. What do you think about this incident? Let me know in the comments below. Should officers have waited a little bit longer, given him a little bit more time, been more patient, or was this just always how it was going to end? The game was rigged from the start. If you want to help support the channel, go watch my vlog channel, Operation Donut. Follow the unsubscribe podcast. Go to donutoperator.com to get some super sweet merch. Follow me on any social media platform. And until next time, please have a fantastic day. Whacker.